Bom dia Portugang. This is the top 10 don'ts in Portugal. He's good, he's good. He's good, he's good. Hey, welcome back to my channel. Today we're diving deep into the world of Portuguese culture. You're not just going to hear the usual travel advice. Oh no, I'm revealing the top 10 things you absolutely should not do in Portugal. Stick around because you won't want to miss this. Don't refuse to try the local cuisine. Listen, if you come to Portugal and don't try the bacalao, it's like going to Paris and ignoring the Eiffel Tower. Portugal offers a rich tapestry of culinary delights. Don't like fish? How about some pastas de nata or perhaps a Francesina sandwich? By refusing to eat the local food, you're missing out on a critical part of Portuguese culture. Seriously, why travel at all if you go to eat the same old food you eat at home? Don't loudly proclaim your love for Spain. All right, Spain's cool, but don't say that out loud here. It's like going to a Metallica concert and shouting, I love Beethoven. Sure, they're both great, but know your audience, okay? Both countries have their own distinct proud cultures. By mixing them up or favoring one over the other, you're basically asking to be shunned. So unless you want to make zero friends and annoy the locals, maybe keep your love for Spain on the lowdown. Don't skip the local history. Portugal's history isn't something you'd want to ignore. Trust me. The locals won't be impressed if you do. This country's past is filled with exploration, revolutions and unique architecture. Want to look like a total tourist? Then go ahead, skip all the historic sites and spend all your time at the beach or in the hotel room. You'll be missing out on enriching experiences like exploring ancient castles, taking in centuries old art and absorbing the complex cultural tapestry that is Portugal. But hey, your loss. Don't ignore Fado music. Oh, you're into pop and rock. That's cute. But you're in Portugal now, and Fado is the heart and soul of this place. This genre has a history that goes back centuries and is filled with emotion, saudade, and an expressive melancholy that encapsulates the Portuguese experience. Ignoring Fado while you're here would be like visiting the United States and ignoring jazz or country music. But sure, if you want to snub the essence of Portuguese culture, be my guest. Don't refuse to learn some basic Portuguese. Politeness, who needs it? If you want to make a lasting impression, and not the good kind, don't bother to learn even the basic pleasantries in Portuguese. While you're at it, refuse to acknowledge anyone who offers you help, directions, or free food samples. The word obrigado, or obrigada if you're a woman, is your bread and butter for saying thank you, Portugal. Using it can be the difference between being seen as a friendly tourist or an uncultured barbarian. Choose wisely. Don't ignore the beach flag. Ignoring the beach flags in Portugal is akin to dismissing a bull in a china shop. Perilous and ill-advised. These flags are not decorative accessories to embellish the coastline. They're there to literally save your life. The Portuguese have an intimate relationship with the ocean. They respect it and know its moods. A red flag means the water's not safe for swimming. Not that it's a challenge for you to prove your bravery. And a green flag isn't a free-for-all to perform your rendition of Baywatch. Do yourself and everyone else a favor. Observe the flags and follow the guidelines. Your Instagram feed will survive without that risky wave shot. I promise. Don't mock the language. If you think Portuguese sounds like a funny version of Spanish, you might as well paint a target on your back. That's a rookie mistake and you should know better. Portuguese is a rich and ancient language with its own set of rules, pronunciations and accents. Mocking it is a slap in the face to a people who are deeply proud of their linguistic heritage. So unless you want to be the laughing stock at every cafe you enter, maybe keep those language jokes to yourself. Don't be impatient in queues. In a rush? Well, that's too bad because the Portuguese take their time. The concept of rushing doesn't quite translate here. Whether it's at a grocery store, bus stop, or even at the bank, people don't hurry for anyone. Being impatient or pushing ahead in line, that's a quick way to make enemies. So practice your deep breathing exercises and maybe bring a book because patience is more than a virtue here. It's a requirement. 
don't complain about late dinners. Listen, if you're hungry at 6 p.m., you might as well grab a snack because dinner isn't happening anytime soon. The Portuguese enjoy their dinners late, usually starting around 8 or 9 p.m. Don't like it? Well, you're in for a world of growling stomachs and judgmental looks. Complaining about it will only make you the butt of the joke. So adapt or bring some granola bars to tide you over. Don't forget to explore the country. If you visit Portugal and only see Lisbon or Porto, you've basically done the equivalent of watching the trailer, but not the movie. Portugal is more than its big cities, with a countryside filled with vineyards, mountain ranges and hidden beaches. Only visiting the urban areas is like ordering a sundae and refusing the cherry on top. You're just not getting the full experience. So hire a car or take a train and go see what the rest of the country has to offer. So that was the top 10 things you absolutely should not do in Portugal. If you're new around here and you like this type of content, please consider subscribing. It really helps me. And if you like the video, please give it a like. And don't forget to tell me what you think in the comments section below the video. Muito obrigado, amigos. Ciao.